I just did the math and I just realized that I've been teaching, mentoring, coaching in some capacity for the last 15 years. And one of the things that I've been quoting since the very beginning is something that I learned from my mentor, Mickey Stonier. And he said that right relationships are more important than being right. So I'll say that again. Right relationships are more important than being right. Let me give you a couple examples. Let's say you're in an argument with your, your friend or loved one and you are absolutely right on a topic, but in the process of proving your correctness, you end up crushing this person's soul or you make them feel super bad or make them feel super worthless. Was it worth winning the argument? Or let's say you have a friend who's super fragile and there's a truth that they need to know, but it could completely destroy your relationship. Is it worth letting them in on that truth right away in that time, in that context? Sometimes conversations are meant to be had in pieces, if that makes sense. Like give them just enough so that they can make some progress on something, but it is more important to maintain the relationship and keep it in good standing than to completely crush somebody or completely devastate them or completely anger them. I use this example when I'm coaching. Sometimes I have people that I'm coaching who are just not ready to uh, hear the truth. Or let's say it's something simple. Like for instance, if I'm coaching in the gym and this person keeps fighting me on something, I keep telling them, dude, you need to be doing this, 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 and they just keep getting mad. Is it worth it for me to be so relentless and so pushy that they end up quitting the gym and don't come back ever? Probably not. I can, I can, I can think of so many instances where I decided to just be like, all right, that's cool, do what you want. And um, I would kind of let the leash go a little bit. And then maybe a month later, two months later, three months later, sometimes a whole year later, the client will come back to me and go, hey, you were right. And I go, yeah, I know. <laughs> but it was worth it for me to maintain the relationship. It was worth it for me to just back off of my position just a little bit and let them have what they wanted so that I didn't burn the bridge. That's the most important thing, guys. I am a bridge builder. In fact, that was kind of coincidentally that I witnessed a bridge going up and down yesterday on the canal because it paints the picture very well. We don't want to burn bridges. We want to build bridges. And just because you don't agree with someone right away, it doesn't mean you can't still be friends. I think that that's an extreme that happens more often than it should where relationships, friendships are broken because people disagree. There is a way to amicably agree to disagree. And in fact, one of the things that I do and I challenge myself to do, and this, this kind of goes in line with what yesterday's vlog talked about, was if someone disagrees with me, then I'm going to go and I'm going to sit down for a good amount of time and I'm going to, under, and I'm going to try and figure out why they believe what they believe. And that might not even include continuing the conversation just then. I might go and go research the thing. I can think of a couple instances with people that I coach where we got into an argument, not an argument, in a discussion, and we disagreed on something, and then we kind of just took a break from the discussion. I went and I played around with the thing that we were talking about for about an hour, and I realized, huh, okay, I can see that. That's a, that's a, that's a good option. And I came back and I'm like, cool, thanks, I learned something today. Uh, here's another thought that kind of goes along with the idea of right relationships are more important than being right. You should always seek to understand. Like if someone disagrees with me, I want to understand their perspective. Because a couple of things might happen. Number one, I might, like I just mentioned, I might learn something. I might learn that, oh, that's a completely valid point, but it was coming at this issue in a way that I would not have looked at. And now I'm better for it because now I, because there's a thousand ways to skin a cat or some people don't like that phrase. There's a thousand ways to do the same thing. And the more ways that you know how to do the same thing and the more effective you can be, especially as a coach, as a mentor, as a teacher, sometimes someone you're teaching is just not going to get it. But if you have another way of explaining it, then that's going to be a whole lot more beneficial for them because they might get it a little bit quicker. And also as you're researching whatever it is that you're researching, you might just find more ways to back up your position and find more reasons that will confirm 
your position and why you believe that thing. That kind of came out a little choppy, but whatever. It's more important, guys, to understand people's perspectives. Remember that perception is everything and context is everything. I've worked with people who are very, very difficult and they're very, very sensitive. And if, you know, I could come in, I would just crush their soul with, dude, this is the way it needs to be. But that wouldn't serve either of us very well because if they're too, if they're not quite there yet, then you're not going to make any headway and then they're going to shut themselves off to you. And that's not good. So yesterday was kind of, in a way, it was a little harsh. It's like, if you take it personally, you're not going to learn, you're not going to grow. So this is, this is my little compromise for you guys. As a teacher, as a coach, as a mentor, if there's something that your mentee, your student, or whatever has to hear, but they're not quite ready to hear it, here's a couple of things I like to do. Number one, I like to just ask questions. And I ask leading questions. And I kind of steer the person towards the issue, and then I'll ask their opinion on it. And I'll ask more questions, and I'll dig deeper. Here's what will end up happening with that line of conversation and that line of questioning is that it's going to force them to think about it. It's going to force them to really find the real why as to why they believe what they believe or the why behind what they're doing. And a lot of times that person is going to figure it out on their own and they're going to realize, oh, rather than me being accusative and saying this, 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 it's more powerful and the person is going to make a deeper connection with the thought if they're the one who came to the conclusion on their own. And I just, I just kind of guided the boat a little bit and that's all I need to do. And here's the thing guys, if you come at people with an accusative tone and say, you do this, you need to do this, you need to change this, people are less likely to want to change. They're actually gonna become more defensive. But if you just ask innocent questions and you, you kind of lead the conversation, lots of times people will figure it out themselves. Maybe not in the, that same conversation, but at least you get the, the wheels turning. And this is where the relationship builds. You start a conversation. I mean, a relationship is about exchange, right? So it's a lot more effective to maintain right relationship than be right. And being right would be like, hey, you need to do this. You're messing up, you're screwing up, you're a screw up, blah, 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 you need to do this. That could damage the relationship. So now, what influence, what impact can you possibly have on a person if the bridge is broken, if it's open, if it's gone? So this is why, let's just sum it up. Right relationships are more important than being right. So yes, you could have the answer, you could be correct, but the way you present it and the way that you handle your correctness matters. If the person is not ready to hear it, if they're not ready to receive that feedback from you, they're just gonna clam up, shut down, probably cut you out and not wanna be around you. And so going back to my example in the gym, sometimes people, clients, just didn't want my feedback. They didn't want to learn. They weren't ready to learn until sometimes either they get hurt or maybe they hear from somebody else and they're like, oh, Ray was right. But I wasn't about to keep pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing to the point where they just decide, I don't wanna be around Ray anymore. He's so freaking annoying. No, I didn't do that. I'm just back off. Okay, if you're not ready to hear it, I'm going to back off a little bit. And I'm just going to, you know, sprinkle things. Sprinkle. Sprinkle ideas. Sprinkle thoughts. And help them get to the conclusion on their own. Because when they get to the conclusion on their own, it's going to be a whole lot more meaningful. It's going to be a whole lot more impactful. And they're going to grab onto it and hold on to it that much more tightly. So that's the thought for the day, guys. Right relationships are more important than right. More important than being right. Hope you guys found this helpful. And if not, you suck. Just kidding. We'll see you guys later.